everyone. Ross, good evening. Um, live video for this week. Um, teacher well-being. Um, so this comes from my research from my book, Just Great Teaching, uh, last couple of years. So I'm only now starting to get out and about and share what I've discovered. Um, I've got a ton of resources. Let me show you what I'm going to share with you. So just send me a direct message. Eisenhower Matrix, sorry, bad print out here. Boston Matrix, which is new to me. Uh, a weekend week planner. 10 ideas, I've been tweeting this out today uh, for staff wellbeing. Um, a research framework uh, for things to improve in school. Um, a research informed intervention process. Um, again, another bad printout. Um, the five minute research plan, I shall share. And then the poster of all the case study schools, just great teaching. Um, that's to just start with. And then I'll also, um, I hope my publishers aren't watching. Uh, I'm going to send you a screenshot um, of the case study school um, from the well-being section of um, Just Great Teaching. So let me just show you a preview. So these are the 10 chapter ideas. Um, the ticks represent the ones that I've mapped out as CPD sessions. So I'm talking here about um, idea number four, teacher well-being. Um, if I just show you a brief little map. Um, these are the schools across the UK. So number four, Parsons Streets Primary School in Bristol. Um, so this is what I want to talk to you about. So I've got a set of slides. I'm going to send it all to you as a PDF and a folder. So send me a direct message. You'll get all these resources which I'm about to explain. The slides and the sample chapter for free. No catches. Um, so um, there's a chap I, um, when I was struggling with my own teacher at well, school leader, mental health, um, I watched this fantastic TED talk by a chap called Ted uh, Nigel Marsh. And it started with this. Pause for a moment and take stock of your miserable existence. Um, if you do not define your meaning of work-life balance, someone else will define it for you. And you may just not like their idea of balance. And when I watched it, the whole TED talk, um, it really struck a chord with me and I went home the same day and actually deleted all the applications that are on my mobile phone that connected me back with work. So you'll also see earlier on my tweets where I've switched and showed you a screenshot of how you can fetch your emails when you choose rather than have the default setting, which is to push, which is if I send you an email at any time of the day, it will arrive and notify you on your phone immediately. And I'm surprised how few people know about that. It's a huge workload change. Um, and I think as society, we have to redefine the rules that essentially the person that works the quickest, the person that has the most money wins, when actually we want to have people that are rewarded for being more fulfilled and more happy. Um, so here's a thought for you. Uh, a bit of research here from um, Linguist and Nordanger. We know that the process that causes a teacher to leave the teaching profession is something that starts a long time before they actually leave. So I wanna talk about some of the cues first of all. So here's some of the, the kind of facts that are currently around at the moment. There's a spider on your shoulder. Um, are you tricking me here? Very good. Um, probably there is. Um, very good, you got me there. Um, teacher training applications are down by 5%. Um, teacher training targets in England have been missed for seven years in a row. Teacher salaries have declined. They're very good. <laughs> teacher salaries have declined by 10% in real terms since 2010. And the government have just admitted after 10 years of denying it that school funding was down. Um, and actually student to teacher ratio numbers have increased one in 17. Uh, so they've risen. So costs have gone down. Class sizes have gone up. You can imagine the stresses on the teaching profession. So here's some questions for you. Could um, sabbaticals or incentives improve or solve the teacher retention crisis? There's lots of research to say where sabbaticals or pay rises have been offered, particularly for shortage subjects. It does increase teacher, uh, <clears throat> teacher retention. Um, now, I'm not moving to the right wing, but I've just read the Policy Exchange Think Tank, who have had lots of... Um, views on over the years there are a, a dark think tank heavily influenced in the department for education um, and they've actually I put out on a blog today so if you go to my website you'll find it um five recommendations that the think tank are making to boris johnson 
And I and actually, to be fair, some of them are very good ideas. And um, one of them is the sabbatical. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if sabbaticals start to happen. Um, so um, first, first idea from me before I go into these slides. Um, Nigel Marsh, TED Talk, make a note. It's called How to Make Work-Life Balance Work. Um, and for 10 seconds, uh, 10 minutes, it will change your life. Um, so here are some workload things to discuss, um, perhaps with yourself or back at school. Um, do your colleagues speak politely and constructively to one another? Um, are you or your school leaders? I don't believe in problem solvers. I believe in problem finders. Um, so, you know, a little shift. Do people go out of their way to find problems rather than solve the ones that are already broken? Because if we go to find them, uh, likely kind of kind of stop those things happening. Um, when last did you say no to something that you've been asked to do? Um, who do you go to when you're struggling? Um, and uh, what kind of plans have you got for day-to-day -day living? So I'm going to come to that shortly and talk through those slides. So just bear with me. Um, I'm going to come on to the first one. Now, this is very famous from Stephen Covey, the Eisenhower Matrix. I used to have this on my school leadership office. And if you go to any blog on my site called The Life of a Deputy Head Teacher, you'll see where I've got screenshots or photographs of this on my office wall. And essentially, urgent and important. Um, these are things that you do immediately, so urgent and important. These are important but not urgent, so kind of looming deadlines. In the bottom right, we've got not important, not urgent. These things are like tidying your cupboard shelves, reading magazines that, uh, or articles you want to say for a rainy day. And then the bottom right, we've got urgent but not important. So these are sometimes things that we could delegate to others that can help. And I think that's a great methodology for a to-do list. So I'll screenshot this underneath the video for you to grab and also get the PDFs. The next one's new to me. Now, some of you that maybe studied A-level business studies or have ta taught business studies, and again, I apologize for the screenshots here, but we've got um, a picture here of a question inside someone's head, and behind it, it says, the future potential is doubtful. In here, we've got a star which says rapid growth. In this image, we've got dog, which is uh, suggesting not worth investing, but low growth. And then this one's a cash cow, which creates profit, but will need to be replaced. And essentially, this is a model for strategic planning. So middle leaders, school leaders out there, an important model for allocating resources. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say it's allocating money and budget aside for professional development. Are some ideas doubtful? Will some ideas um, have rapid growth? Are some just a waste of time? Will some cost a bit of money initially and then need replacing, but actually will increase growth and share? Now, that's new to me, and that's I guess it's a very much a business model, but I suspect that will work in many fields of school life also. Um, so that's um, the Boston Matrix. In the slides that I'm also going to give you, I've got some pictures. I don't have them here, but I've got a picture of six apples. So I want you to imagine uh, a Granny Smith apple, a red delicious apple, maybe a pink lady and a golden delicious. And I don't know if you're familiar with um, Barry Schwartz, the paradox of choice. When we were presented with too many choices, it's actually more stressful and it actually leads us to uh, make less of a better decision and we end up being less fulfilled. And again, with teacher well-being, and I would even say with children in our schools, um, when we are presented with less choice, so if I say, for example, you can have a Granny Smith, the green apple or a red delicious apple um, between those two choices there's less stress so something to consider so again the slides read through that I don't have a screenshot with uh, with me to show you next idea is this now we're all busy people all of us you and me um, but here's a little grid do you plan to do things away from work now it's really simple but you've got Monday to Sunday there we all need to have a gym day. We all need a day to go home. That's typically Friday or we'll go to the pub or whatever it would be. But do you have a regular methodology? Sometimes just by signing up to something on one night after school forces you to go. Now, I know parents evenings and those things get in the way. Um, I'm going to share the slides on a link underneath the video. Or if you send me a direct message, I'll send you a link to the slides after. 
Um, but sometimes just diarising this, the so new teachers watching, sometimes just writing this down is sufficient um, ideas um, to help you switch off. Um, now, next idea, this is probably my favourite. Um, staff wellbeing policy. Here's 10 ideas. Now, I put this on a Twitter screenshot earlier. Um, there is tons of stuff on here. So just let me just read some out. No written lesson plans of any kind. No pressure to put on show lessons. No cover duty for more than one lesson every half term. So six covers a year. No written reports. Marking is for students only, not for all uh, school leaders or inspectors. Data is entered only once. CPD is delivered in twilight, finishes at 4.15 with days off in lieu. And CPD on managing stress is provided with the message that keeping yourself busy is not a sign of strength. And the final one, open door senior leadership. This is a real school wellbeing policy. And actually, they've got a list of 47 things that I've seen living and breathing. There is another one that you'll be able to get in the book also. Um, what else can I share with you? Um, let's see. Let's see. I'll go to um, this is the research development practitioner framework from the Open University. If you see at the top, it says working as a researcher. Number two developing ways of thinking and number three moving on with research and this is a great methodology for tackling action research but particularly research for teacher well-being and starting to develop and think like a researcher in your school to support this you've also got this simple what who what when where how and what next methodology for research informed interventions with some simple questions to ask. So whatever you choose, dual coding, uh, retrieval practice, managing behavior, lesson planning. It's a nice little framework to think through with somebody in a team. You wanna take it further. Um, you've got the five minute research plan. Now this is uh, um, badly printed. Um, the five minute research plan, you've got um, a nice research inquiry framework to take it a bit more deeper for MPQML, for MPQSL, for MA projects. And again, this is broadly in line with a five minute methodology. Um, another great way um, to think about um, taking ideas uh, to get your staff or yourself more engaged with research. Just instead of fo following all these fads, uh, there's no research, for example, on the Purple Pen of Progress. Does it work? What impact does it have? But yet we choose to follow that simple idea in a profession that's obsessed by research and evidence. Um, this link here, you can grab it now if you want, bit.ly forward slash capital JGT underscore poster, not underscore, sorry, lowercase. You grab the poster from the 10 case study schools that are researched in Just Great Teaching. Now, after this video, send me a direct message or I'll pin the link under the slide, uh, under the video, you'll get all the resources and the slides that I haven't really talked through because I'm sharing on the video, all these handouts and I'm gonna screenshot, um, let me see what page it is, the school case study of a school in Bristol, page 93, um, of this case study school um, where you can read a bit more about how this school um, has gone through the same challenges, the same successes, and what people can do to adapt some of the content in their own ideas. Let me see if I haven't missed anything. Feel free to post some questions. Now, in the slides I'm also going to give you is some top tips for rethinking marking, some top tips for rethinking um, meetings, and what else is in there? And there's a bit of research. I've signposted something about presenteeism, um, which is about being at work even when you, uh, you're you ill and you really should be at home. Um, two websites, the Health and Safety Executive website, which has got a great talking toolkit for teaching well-being for your whole school, not just for yourself. And an Education Support Partnership, which is a free confidential helpline for all teachers to call 24 hours a day, uh, which will provide you with practice, uh, emotional support um, for stress, anxiety, uh, money worries, bereavement, all sorts of things. And uh, they're a welcome addition to our profession. And I think that's a phone number that should be on every 
um, staff room in the country across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, right, I'm going to stop there. Um, loads of ideas. Um, I went to Belgium uh, this week as well as a school in Preston. Um, fantastic stuff that I saw, Shape International School in particular. Um, nine uh, schools, 11 nations all on one site. So I'm going to blog about that tomorrow night, but you, you'll have seen some of the images on my channel. Um, also, um, Preston, where I went to go and visit uh, and share some ideas from Just Great Teaching, a great school, Archbishop Temple, thank you. Um, tomorrow I'm off to Wandsworth um, to visit um, Abermill Primary School um, to talk about teacher wellbeing, this content. Uh, then to Cardinal Newman and Newman in Luton to talk about the plan content from Mark Plan Teach. Uh, Mark Plan 2, sorry, Mark Plan Teach 2.0 coming out in September. Um, and then I've actually got um, quite a few interesting podcasts, one with Kirsty Williams, who's the Education Secretary of State for Wales. So I'm going to try and see if I can make um, interviewing uh, Education Secretary of State uh, quite one of the things on my podcast channel. Um, another thing, I posted something on Brexit over um, on fr oh, whenever it was, Friday or Saturday. I think it was Saturday morning when we had left Europe. It's 19 hours. And my God, wasn't that controversial. Um, I'm a Remainer. I, lived in I, I live in London. I've got mixed views. I'm a Scottish uh, uh, by birth. Uh, so I've got views on independence and all sorts of things. But without getting too political, there are teachers in... England, who are conservative and who have voted for Brexit. And when you raise the topic on social media, um, people are attacked. Um, and I've had my bias too, but I think uh, now I've physically met people on the road on my travels. Um, it's quite uh, a small audience, particularly for the teaching profession, um, Tories, pro-Brexit, those types of things. I'm not. But I think it's important to talk about it. And it's just a bit disappointing to be attacked by fellow colleagues um, for sharing those views for something that I actually disagree with myself, but I, I take the flack. But uh, hey, that, that, that's what you do when you, you have a large um, audience on social media. Anyway, um, have a great evening. Um, ideas in the book. I've got seven or eight handouts for you here. I'm going to send a link to you now and the screenshots from the case study of Just Great Teaching on teacher wellbeing. Look after yourself because you have to, because if no one else does, or who looks after you is the question I've got for you. Um, and, and how do you spot the cues when you're struggling is probably the, uh, a tougher one to answer for us all. Um, we all um, have mental health. We all need to manage it. And uh, I think we should do more in our schools, particularly to support teachers new to the profession, but or to keep experienced teachers in the profession um, longer. Um, I'm going to stop on waffling. Thanks for all your comments. Uh, and I shall see you next um, this time next week.